Welcome back to the shop, everybody. Today I have a new tool and I have to figure out how to move it along with this and this. Definitely this one. And last but not least, this beast. I got quite a bit of the small machinery already moved and now it's time to get some of this big equipment out of here and over to the new shop. So let's get this machine out of here. I recruited a real life wingman to help me get all this equipment moved today. We're going to be using my Lindy forklift. I love it because of its short wheelbase, its high lifting capacity, its ease of use, and its great visibility for the operator. The forks aren't quite long enough to reach all the way under the shaper and hold it stable, so I've added these pieces of channel iron to extend the forks out to make it a little bit safer. Cincinnati claims that this machine can cut up to two inches depth of cut. I've only been able to do inch and a quarter, but we should definitely try for two inches one day. Unfortunately, these shapers have been really hard to come by as of late. Most of them have ended up in scrap yards, so I'm going to try to be a little more delicate on how I handle and strap down the machine. We're doing great. We got the shaper loaded, but it's now time to look at getting this big lathe all rigged up and loaded also. So the manufacturer recommends we pick it up from this rigging point right here at the bottom of the base. And I'm gonna be doing it with this big bar. This is a piece of two inch cold roll and it slides through here. So the challenges with lifting this thing is that we have 70% of the weight right here on this side of the machine. But I'm gonna be lifting this part of the machine with these chokers and I come up and I attach it to this spreader bar across the forks right here on this pin that I made the last time I lifted this machine. Now you're probably wondering why you just don't hook it over the fork like that. Well, you see how this fork wants to spread this choker apart and you're actually, you're pulling on the stitching right there. And then you put two of them on there like this because this forklift has such wide forks, this is bad practice. And what's gonna happen if we tie the other chokers to this one, these forks wanna do the spread, which puts a lot of load on the mast. And these forks aren't designed to be pulled apart. So we want everything to be coming to a central location and not putting any forces on the forks themselves besides just the down force. So now that the straps are gonna take care of the load side, we just make sure that this bed doesn't tip down. So we need something adjustable and we're gonna use a lifting chain for that. I'm gonna strap it right here to the bed. And this is the recommended lifting point for this lathe. And then we come up to the central location at the top and off we go. If I rigged from one fork, I would probably bend it because it only has a 5,000 pound load capacity. It took me a few tries to find the perfect link in the chain to get this lathe to lift perfectly flat and level. And right on cue, here comes Brad to help me get this thing loaded onto the trailer. It's really tempting to come in with the forks and just pick it up from underneath but this lathe is pretty delicate because of how long it is, so I'm just gonna stick with the recommended rigging points from the factory. Having a lathe of this size is definitely a luxury, but it's also one of my favorite tools to run in the shop. So that was pretty successful. We got it all loaded up, sitting pretty close to center on the trailer, but we have room for one more piece of equipment on the front, so let's grab the Kearney Trekker and get that loaded up. The and Trekker was my very first piece of big American iron and it's quite an addicting machine to operate because you can move a lot of material really fast and it's really fun to use. This machine is pretty special when you think about that it was made in 1943 and it's still in use today. That's a really good testament to Kearney and Trekker's build quality. I need the Kearney Trekker to be in the center of the trailer so I'm using the boom of the forklift to swing it in position. Oh, dang it. <laughs> I ran over my broom. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't pick your stuff up. You run your broom over. Ah. Uh. That way the chains don't hurt the paint. <laughs> It's always handy to put a twist in the strap so then when it goes down the road, it doesn't fly like an airplane wing. Yeah. 
Try to keep the straps away from the machined areas. So we got everything loaded up. So let's go drop it off to the new shop and get it all unloaded. Now that everything's strapped and tied down securely, we only have a 20 minute drive to the new facility. We've arrived at the new shop safe and sound and the new shop is really awesome. It's bigger, taller ceilings, about 34 feet to be exact, much wider doors, 16 feet instead of 12. It has heated floors to keep my feet nice and warm. And of course, just more opportunity because we have about 7,000 square feet compared to the 5,000 that I had before. So much more opportunities for a lot more fun. The Lindy forklift has what you call lumber forks on them. They're much thinner, but a lot wider. This helps get underneath thin pieces of material, pick stuff up so you don't have dunnage underneath of them, but they can also be a pain because they're so wide. I don't know, I have mixed feelings about them, and I wish I had another set that were a standard size. Unloading this big equipment is a piece of cake. It goes much the same as it was when it was loaded, but when the equipment does come off the trailer, I really don't have a home for it. I'm just going to be placing it on the floor, out of the way, so we can continue to bring more equipment back. I should have marked what chain link I used in the last time. It took me a couple tries again to find the right one, but eventually I did find it. We made it. Nothing's broke, not a single knob got bonked into or bent, so when moving equipment that's a great day. But uh, I say we, oh, what do we want to do? We got more equipment to go pick up. What are we talking about? So let's go grab that. So look what just arrived. And we're gonna need this to move the next big piece of equipment. So let me show you what it's all about. So look at what we have here. This is a Cincinnati number five vertical milling machine weighing in at 18,500 pounds and I call it nightmare. 18,500 pounds, that's 10 Volkswagen Beetles. For the last year, I've been storing it in this facility, not able to use it or move it because of its size and weight. So I look forward to getting it to the new machine shop so we'll be able to utilize this beast and be able to make some cool stuff with it. So let's get it moved. So the forklift that I rented will barely fit under this 14 foot door. I've rented this big forklift for one hour, so let's see if I can get it all done in that short time period. The original plan was to pick it up with some chokers. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, because if I can get it up and pick it up, I can put dunnage underneath it. Oh, this is a nightmare, <laughs> well, hence its name. So here's why I'm frustrated. The milling machine is sitting flat on the floor and I cannot get the forks underneath of it to move it. So my next idea is to grab it from the top, choke it, and move it and drag it that way, put it on the trailer. But the mast is hitting the garage door and not allowing me to move that way. So I'm going to use it to put some dunnage underneath of it to grab it from the bottom. Now this forklift has a 21,000 pound load capacity on a two foot center. Anything outside of those parameters, I could tip the forklift over or not be able to turn very well. So I have to have the milling machine as tight as possible just to barely lift it and even then it's really kind of balancing on that teeter point. <laughs> the choker that I used last time barely reaches around this thing. Life would be boring if things went to plan all the time, right? So I brought in my buddy Doug to give me an extra set of eyeballs on the ground to help me move this big mill safely. I cannot freaking turn. <laughs> this is the most scariest part of this whole thing. It's lifting it that three feet up and putting it onto the trailer. That's when things get a little sketchy, but we're still safe. We're just not as much margins as I was hoping to have. No matter how many times I do this, I still get nervous, even though I do this a lot. I'm super excited. 
That worked out, well, not quite perfectly, but it's on the trailer, so it was a success. So I have a little more space left on the front of the trailer, so let's get the Fadal loaded. I needed to turn the machine around to get access to the back. Now there's a couple things I want you guys to notice. My big forklift barely picks it up. And what you need to do is you need to put these big bars inside the framework and pick it up that way. That keeps it safe. And also when you transport a CNC machine like this, there's a counterweight in the head that needs to be pinned. So it keeps the Z axis from bouncing around. Having long forks on this heister really does make it easy to lift up this milling machine and then it makes it even easier to position it right in the center of the trailer. Since I have the big forklift here in the shop, I'm gonna utilize it to move the water jet tank. Now, I've already removed all the external components that make up the water jet. Those are really easy to move, but what is a pain is this tank. The tank originally came in parts, but I'm gonna to choose to keep it together. This is gonna to save me about the forklift rental and labor when it comes to assembly of the water jet. Generally, it had about a foot deep of garnet inside of it. So I brought in a sucker pump truck to pump out all the extra garnet, which weighed about 20,000 pounds. Another neat thing about tank cleaning is I found all the clamps that hold the material down to the ribs. So that's a big plus. Transporting the tank in one piece is going to make this an oversized load, but would you know it, it's only $20 for an oversized load permit. So I think it's well worth keeping the tank together. We need this forklift to unload everything. So I'm going to give it back to the truck driver. He's going to load it on his trailer and he's going to follow us out to the new shop. So we'll use this to unload too. Whew, looks like we just barely made the one hour deadline. That was close. A lot of good memories were made in this machine shop. I look forward to coming up with more in the new one. The forklift truck driver didn't feel comfortable driving down the icy road, so he just dropped it off for me, and I feel comfortable driving it down to get everything unloaded. made it. I'll have you drive forward and then I'll drive the milling machine back to the corner and then we'll just reverse and I'll pick that thing off and then you're pew, out of here. It's probably going to take me a few weeks to get this big iron set into position and ready to work and then the electron hoses those got to be hooked up too so we got some time before the shop is really operational. So both mills have landed here safely, the old and the new, but the one piece of equipment we got to land is the water jet tank. So let's get that in place. I'm gonna pick the water jet tank up off the trailer and hopefully position it perfectly one time. And I've laid out some blue chalk lines on the floor and hopefully it'll be its forever home. Victory! Everything is here from the old shop. Can you tell in my smile and how messy my hair is? The relief, the relief how crazy it's been moving. <laughs> but I'm happy, we've made it. Well, I'm sure you guys want to see this big, huge milling machine run, and so do I. And I'm sure you have lots of questions on how it works and how it operates, and I'll be answering those 
and also questions about the building and the facility all in another video. So stay tuned for that and I'll catch you guys on the next one.